What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're here with my Rivian R1T. I'm in Lionel Lakes, Minnesota, and we're about to head out on a 3,000 mile multi-part road trip. So grab some popcorn and let's get started. As I mentioned, here is my R1T and my friend Tim's Silverado there, we were comparing the size. And this is a roughly 500 mile R1T, I picked it up exactly one week ago, almost to the hour. And let me just show you how I have it loaded up. I actually flew it on Friday, took delivery. Check out that video if you're interested. So let's we'll start up here with the frunk. I don't have a ton of stuff being that I did fly in versus drive in. Got my suitcase and my dirty laundry. I was gonna put my dirty laundry in the gear tunnel, um, but then after I put my suitcase up here, I was concerned about it sliding back and forth if I take any corners. So I put it up here just to kind of fill up the space a little bit more so that it's not sliding around and potentially scratching the plastic. Not that I really care that much, but I don't want to hear the clunking of my suitcase around. Love that this is power up here. And I did just get the whole truck covered in SunTech Reaction uh, paint protection film so it should stay nice and clean and I don't have to worry about rock chips or anything like that. Let me show you the odometer here. Uh, wrong screen, that is in... No, oh, no, that's in vehicle? Oh, here we go. Sorry, still getting used to the menus here. Um, so here we have it. So I reset this trip, but I'm gonna reset it again just because it had some losses there. This is my since new trip. Uh, I've been driving it a bit hard, so disregard that 1.5 mile per kilowatt hour. That is not indicative. We will see how it is on actual driving efficiency. I've got an 11,000 VIN there, and this is Rivian Blue with Ocean Coast. It has the on-road underbody, and it has the 20-inch all-terrain wheels. And you can see my odometer there, 469 miles, basically brand new. We are charged up to 99%. Uh, it was at 100%, but just dipped down a tiny bit. And that 293 is a bit skewed, so let's look at drive modes here. Uh, well, that's actually on the energy screen. Some of these could use a little bit of moving around. So we're on conserve right now. Uh, I'll probably switch it to all-purpose and then drop it into conserve once we're on the interstate. Let me show you kind of where we're headed. And we'll actually test out the route planning here as well. So kind of the first uh, waypoint of sorts is Lincoln, Nebraska. So... I believe I should be able to get all the way to the Electrify America kind of on the west side of Des Moines without charging. I am probably going to stop at the Albert Lee Electrify America. It's showing as completely down on plug share. Um, that's really interesting. That shouldn't be necessary to charge this much. Well, anyway, I think I can make it all the way down here um, to Des Moines without stopping. Let's just see. So we'll clear that out and we'll go, not Ames, where's my, there we go, I think it's this one here, yep, so Milwaukee, come and go, Electrify America, route planning on this is pretty good, but not great, so it wants us to stop at, this is a charge point there for 53 minutes, to get there with 67 miles, that is unnecessary, let's remove charging stops. 277 miles. Um, we'll see if that's doable. There are quite a few charge points along the way. Uh, they're not the fastest, but if I only need a slight top off, should be fine. So we'll do start route, go anyway. And we'll zoom out of here. And it's, yeah, it won't even calculate because it thinks I won't make it, but that's fine. Uh, I've got the my iPad mini mounted here on a RAM mount with a different holder, actually. So that's going to be for the live stream. So certainly, uh, if you're watching this and you really want to relive the trip, watch the live stream. I've got my radar detector. I added a like hardwire kit, so it's tapped into one of the mirror circuits up here, which is really nice. A lot cleaner rather than having a cord run across the dash, even though I do have the iPad cord. I've got the all important snacks, Gatorade. I tend to not stay hydrated on road trips, so that should help me a little bit. Water. Got my backpack there. I just wanted it for easy reach. Uh, otherwise, I would have put it probably in the gear tunnel. And let me just show you the rest here. Truck bed is completely empty, but I do have the full-size spare. Certainly hope I won't need to use it, but it's there if, it is, if I do. 
I've got some detailing supplies and the window sticker in there so I can keep the windshield clean for you guys. Back seat is uh, empty. You can peek into the gear tunnel there as well, which is kind of cool. I've got the iPad powered from the 120 volt outlet back here. Um, not sure the output of the USB-C, so I just wanted to use my 120 volt adapter because the iPad uses a fair amount of power. I've got some other just miscellaneous stuff down here, but as I mentioned, I flew in, so I don't really have a ton of stuff. And certainly if you're new here, you maybe don't know that I have taken a ton of road trips in electric cars. I had a Model S70D that I put 60,000 miles on in 2020 alone. Uh, sold that with 196,000 miles. I had a Volkswagen ID4. I put 17,000 miles on that in just about a year. I did a North Carolina to Colorado to Minnesota back to North Carolina road trip in that. So I have a whole series on that if you're interested to see how that was. It's also kind of a good indication of how Electrify America and just the charging networks in the U.S. as a whole have kind of aged and progressed over time. Uh, so that's kind of another purpose of this trip is to see how things are going. Um, I've been hearing a lot of reports of poor charging. I've seen some poor charging experiences. So let's just go see what it's actually like on a road trip. Luckily, the Rivian does have enough range that if I see on Plug Share or the Electrify America app that I think a station is going to be down, I can just deep charge and then skip it if necessary as long as I know ahead uh, and I probably won't be running it super low just to play it a little safe uh, pulling into Des Moines I'm gonna run it pretty low but there's a lot of different bailout options along the way so I'm not very concerned but anyway here is my R1T and let's hit the road and we are on the road car estimates 293 miles of range we have 274 miles to go uh, we have to average about 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour to make it all the way to Waukee. Um, we'll maybe stop in Albert Lee or potentially at one of the charge points along 35 in Iowa. So what do I find out if we'll make it or if we need to stop and charge? So hoping for the best, this is going to be a pretty long jaunt of this trip. So we have driven 94.9 miles so far. We're averaging uh, 2.13 mile per kilowatt hour, which is not bad, but slightly worse than we need to be to make it all the way to Milwaukee, Iowa. Um, so I am going to do a slight detour to the Albert Lee Electrify America. There's a message on PlugShare indicating that the entire station is down, uh, but I checked the Electrify America app and it looks like one of the stations is in use and on PlugShare there actually was someone with an Ionic 5 checked in as using it right now so I don't need to charge there so I'll just swing by and if, if it's totally full and I can't charge that's fine um, but it's 17 minutes away and it says we'll arrive there with 162 miles of range we're at 190 miles of range right now 63 percent it's a little bit dumb the Rivian doesn't tell you what percentage you'll arrive with only what mileage you'll arrive with um, yeah I'm curious to see what the state of that station is and Maybe we'll get a little bit of charge and the battery is preparing battery for fast charging. So we shall see. So here you can see kind of what it looks like. So 1.97 the last 15 minutes. We're at 63%, uh, 189 miles. And there is that preparing battery for fast charging message. And that's the Albert Lee uh, Electrify America at a Casey's gas station convenience store. So should be pretty decent. And we just arrived here at the Albert Lee Electrify America. Um, we're at 55%, 165 miles. And let's see how far we have to the Waukee station. And see what it wants for charging. So I'm gonna remove those charging stops. Uh, so still 163 miles and we have, like I said, 165 miles of range right now. 
I pulled onto the wrong side of the station because I think it will actually be easier given the charge port location. I think that should reach without problems. Um, but it would have been a struggle to get it kind of all the way around to this side with the left front uh, charge port. And this is the only station that was showing as available on the Electrify America app and PlugShare actually shows this entire site down. Um, so here we have members only credit card reader unavailable, uh, but also the entire station's unavailable. This one is just completely dead. And let's check out number two here. This one's also just completely dead. So let me check on the live stream here because the truck just locked. So hopefully it's still working um, and we'll get plugged in. So surprisingly, it's working totally fine. And we're at 151 kilowatt activated without issue. So that's a pleasant surprise. Um, on the truck itself, it's showing 150 kilowatt. Here you can see the light bar showing the charging status there. And uh, pretty uneventful. I think 150 is probably pretty close to what it should be getting at the 56% here. And um, yeah, it, it works. So there's that. Can't really complain a whole lot, but uh, the whole site is kind of a disaster. But at least they're communicating that this site may not work for you. In fact, probably won't work for you. So... That's good. Let's take a look at the hardware here. Uh, so they've got additional conduits here, probably for future um, cabinets. We've got the ABB power cabinets over here. We've got the switch gear. So that's where all the breakers and everything are. And over here we have the 1000 kVA transformer. Let's see what the utility is here, I'm curious. This is Freeborn Mower Co-op Electric, I guess. So we'll charge up a little bit and then we'll head out. Probably uh, get up to like 65, 70%. That way I can drive a little bit faster. All right, so we've added 25 kilowatt hour, um, 79 kilowatt there. So we're going to stop charging and we're gonna get, hit back, get back on the road. Let's see what it's showing for. Uh, so 216 miles. For the live stream, uh, I stopped the charging because I think we're ready to head out. It was slowing down the charging quite a bit. And let's just see here. Yeah, so now it's estimated we'll arrive to the Waukee station with 27 miles of estimated range. So that's like 10%, which is more than enough. And we're gonna hit the road after I unplug. <laughs> are 70 miles out from the walkie charging station and the preparing battery for fast charging message just now came on so kind of interesting strategy there um, must be that it's about an hour or maybe it's using battery temperature but battery should be pretty warm because we did do 150 kilowatt for a little bit there at the albert lee station and it's 77 degrees out so i can't imagine it cooled off a whole lot unless the vehicle was actively cooling it and efficiency 207 miles driven so far, 1.94 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, I did increase the speed a little bit, so that's certainly a factor. And yeah, we're just uh, continuing on here through the drive of a lot of cornfields, basically. So it turns out when the uh, estimated range goes below 50% or 50 miles. Uh, it turns to yellow. It has nothing to do with the percentage, which is a little weird. I wish it was probably uh, based on 20%. And there we also have um, the battery low. And here we have it. We're going to be arriving with 18 miles of estimated range, and we're 28 miles away. So should be nice and low when we arrive. Hopefully we can get 200 kilowatts. Now 
and we just crossed down to 10% uh, and we're getting a red battery icon there. So it's, we're nine miles away from the charging station and uh, looks like we'll arrive there with 19%. Totally fine. So just going to continue on here and we'll see you at the charging station. And as you can see, we have arrived to the Waukee, Iowa, come and go Electrify America charging station. We have the whole site to ourselves here. We arrived with 17 miles of range or 6% and we'll continue the trip here, see what it says. And it wants us to charge, I believe 27 minutes to get to Council Bluffs, Iowa, which is over here near Omaha. But I might run into Fleet Farm way back there. If you're not familiar with Fleet Farm, they have some cool stuff. It's kind of like a farm supply place, but not really my normal cup of tea, but kind of cool to just visit. Uh, and if we do that, we'll probably just continue all the way to Lincoln. But without further ado, let me get plugged in so we're not wasting time talking when I could be charging and talking. And just plugged in here, you can see all the bug guts here. Lots and lots of bugs going to have to clean the windshield too. Luckily, whole car is PPF, so not concerned with the bugs on the vehicle itself. I mean, I'm going to probably wipe it off tonight just so the bugs aren't kind of sitting and eating into the paint protection film so we're initiating charging thank you for choosing lunch by america you can kind of see the headlights uh reflected which is cool the screen is not very bright we're at six percent ramping up here let's see hopefully we get should be nice and high and actually i'm seeing here it looks like there's a lot of moisture around the base of the charger which is not a good sign because uh, that means that most likely the coolant for the liquid cooling system is potentially drained out hopefully uh, you can hear me okay but look at that we're getting uh, 187 kilowatt that is excellent I think that should be pretty that should be probably full power yeah it's probably 500 amps And we're still charging really well, getting 209, 210 kilowatt bouncing right there, probably just a rounding issue. Uh, and it's actually being limited by the Rivian right now, which is, I mean, I'm happy that it's being limited by the Rivian rather than by the station, though I wish the thermal envelope on the Rivian was a little bit better, but uh, we've been charging for 17 minutes so far. We've added 58 kilowatt or 58 and a half kilowatt hour, really doing I can't ask for better. 210 kilowatt. So hope this continues and we'll just keep going until it tapers, I suppose. All right, so we started at 7%. We're now at 71%. We've dropped down to uh, about 85 kilowatts at a 96 kilowatt hours in 33 minutes. So I think it is time to stop charging here because that is too slow. Um, to get to Lincoln is 178 miles. We have 214 miles estimated. So I think we can make it, um, but otherwise there is a charger right about here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, basically Omaha. Um, let's actually see what it says now. It might actually let us. Remove charging stops. Start, go anyway. So. I think we're going to do this anyway um, and hope for the best. Otherwise, we'll stop in Council Bluffs there if we need to. But I think we'll be fine to make it the whole way. And let's stop charging. So 83 or uh, sorry, 97.3 kilowatt hour added or 199 miles essentially of charge. Session summary right there, 97.5. And let's stop charging. Just like that. Now I'm going to unplug. We'll hit the road. So I did end up deciding to do a detour to the Council Bluff station. Um, we have 59 miles of range remaining and it would have been very close to make it all the way to Lincoln. So we have five and a half miles to two Council Bluffs. Uh, we should arrive there, I think 
roughly 20 or probably like 16, 17 percent. I've been hammering it a bit once I made that decision, so burning up some extra juice. And I'm curious to see how the vehicle charges starting at a little bit higher state of charge with the higher pack voltage. We might even see about 220 kilowatts, which would be cool. Um, but we'll probably only charge there 10, 15 minutes or so. And then we'll head to Lincoln and I'll probably be doing a pretty deep charge in Lincoln. And we've just made it to Council Bluffs. We're at 18%, 54% uh, estimated. Let's see how far to Lincoln. So only 63 miles, but it doesn't think we can get there. Well, we'll have to charge first. So there's an ID4 flipping around here. We have a Mercedes EQB, which I've never seen one of those in person. We have this BMW i4 eDrive 40. Man, this EQB looks great. So I'm gonna get started plugged in here and then we'll uh, check it out here. All right, so we were trying to charge on this one, number four, uh, called Electrify America, they couldn't get it going. This one, the guy was convinced that it should say complimentary charging, but it doesn't. He tried to do a hard reset, wasn't able to because funny how that works, you can't remotely trigger a hard reset when it's not network connected. This one's unavailable, they apparently knew about that, so that's fine, I guess. Uh, the BMW i4 and the EQB just left, uh, so I'm plugged in now on number two here. Looks like we are charging with the green light, but this one actually said complimentary session on the screen, so see if this one shows it as well and then this one is also or also is showing complimentary session so these two are acting how the station should be acting uh and getting free charging but number three over there or number four over there was not which is very frustrating if the i4 and the eqb hadn't left i was just about to go to the charge point nearby but because i don't really need a ton of charge i just need a little bit more to be able to get to lincoln let's see are we charging yet Okay, so we're getting not full power, 103 kilowatt. Not great, but I'll take it over 62 and certainly over zero. All right, charge up to 32%, uh, 95 miles estimated. We added 20 kilowatt hours in 12 minutes. Uh, definitely not 12 minutes on site here though. So even though we were only charging for 12 minutes, I was here for probably half an hour, I would guess. I uh, tried using number four first, uh, being that that was the unit that was open and seemed available, and couldn't get it to activate, and eventually called Electrify America, and they said that it should be free. It wasn't, because so, I know to look for the complimentary session uh, message on the screens. But then the guy tried to do a hard reset on it to try and get the status to update, I guess. Uh, and I guess it had a heartbeat two minutes ago from the station to the server but the hard reset wouldn't go through. So uh, there was essentially he, nothing he could do to make it work for me. But luckily right after that, as I was about to, to depart for the charge point nearby out of Cabela's, a 62 and a half kilowatt CP250, uh, the BMW i4 and the Mercedes EQB drivers actually came out at basically the exact same time. Uh, I don't know if they know each other or what, but that made it so that I could use the number two, I believe it was. Being here um and i got about 110 kilowatts so definitely not full power but better than zero and better than 62 kilowatt so charged up and now we're headed to lincoln we'll have a little bit of a buffer i'm meeting my friend megan for dinner there um and we'll probably get a decently deep charge because dinner won't be that fast <laughs> uh, and then i think the next stop will probably be lexington nebraska i believe but i'll have to double check on the map And we've just arrived to the Lincoln, Nebraska, super, or not supercharger, Electrify America station. Uh, we're at 5% state of charge, 13 miles. Uh, let's just look at the efficiency here. There's, that was our last session. Efficiency, I have not reset it since this morning, so we're averaging 1.81 miles per kilowatt hour. And we're, we're gonna hit a thousand miles on our next charging jaunt. Now we're down to 4%, looks like it was just on the cusp. Uh, it looks like the road's closed over here. There was some sort of accident, which is not good, but we'll get plugged in. 
at least the road was closed just after the Casey's here so I could still charge. This looks like a new handle, so that's good. There we go, plugged in. Didn't need to activate it or anything. We have so many bugs here. Not sure how well you can see that. Good noise is happening. You can see the reflection more than you can see the screen, but we'll see what happens here. These have been taking a little while, or at least did at the last one, so let's look in the truck. Got the live stream going still for hours. So thank you to anyone that watched that live stream. And we're charging, so that's good. Ramping up slowly here. And I'm glad it's a free session because uh, I'm going to be dropping my car off for a little bit here and going to dinner. Let's see how fast it goes. Still ramping up, 150. Good, uh, it's getting there. And just got back from dinner with Megan and her family and we've charged to 99% in an hour and 35 minutes. Uh, it would have been $30, but it was a complimentary session. So now we're gonna be hopping in the truck here. I'm unplugging it. And let me show you how many miles it's projecting and kind of our plan for the evening. So 134 kilowatt hour to go from five to 99%. Uh, the app was showing 100%, but whatever. Um, Zero dollars, of course. We've got an Ionic 5 here, and let's hop in and take a look at what we're looking at. I use pet mode to keep the climate on the whole time. And looks like we're estimating 293 miles at uh, 100%. Let's hit the road and see what our plan is. Here's the session summary, which is kind of interesting. So it took about 90 minutes for that 135 kilowatt hour. Not bad. Fair amount of power going to cabin and battery temps. So for now, we're gonna head to North Platte. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna make it the whole way. There's a hotel kind of in Gothenburg here near the Tesla Supercharger. Um, but otherwise, we'll continue on. Uh, there's only one J1772 there, so I'll probably swing through and see if it's open. And if it's open, I'll book a hotel and stay there. Uh, otherwise, we'll probably just continue on and see where we end up. And just for reference, uh, Colorado or Denver and Fort Collins are over here. Let's get going. I don't know why it thinks we can't make uh, 221 miles at 100%, but uh, I think we're fine. And here's what we've driven so far, 452, 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Gothenburg, Nebraska, trying to charge here on this very old Clipper Creek Sun Country Highway DS100 unit, but unfortunately it's not working because my tentative plan was to stay at the Comfort Suites across the street and book a hotel room, but I'm glad I didn't book a room before checking the charging station here because this doesn't seem to work, unfortunately. So I think we're continuing on to North Platte. Well, we've got full level, out of spec level shenanigans happening here. 1% arrival. Uh, we're up to 672 miles. So I'll have to see how many miles we drove from 100% down to 1%. And let's get plugged in here. Looks like complimentary session. So that is a promising sign on this 
Signet 350 kilowatt unit. These look like brand new handles. Those look glorious. So this is all looking very promising. Let's get plugged in here just like that. Connecting to vehicle. You can actually see the screens at night. Weird concept. Just like that, initiating charging. We do have one stall here. I'll show you that well. That's initiating. So that one seems fine. This one's down. This one's also a complimentary session. So looks like a lot of new handles here. That looks brand new. These look a bit tattered. This one looks brand new. And let's see here. So we've got good noises here. Continue. And we're ramping up. Truck is uh, covered in bugs. Green light bar is flashing. Now, even the logo has uh, bug guts on it. So love that. And yay, yeah, we're ramping nice and quick. See what we get up to. We probably should get up to like 170 ish, given the pack voltage is fairly low with 1%. Uh, it's possible it has to wait a moment to ramp up before it actually lets it happen. Or maybe the pack voltage is just that low, but this should be given full 500 amps. I'll give it a minute here. I need to figure out where I'm staying tonight. So we just crossed 5% and it looked like it, so it went up to 190 kilowatts roughly. And now it's saying limited by charging station. I think you caught that as I started recording. And now we're dropping down dramatically. So that's not great not good so now we're at four per four kilowatt and we've got a charging station error so i guess i'm gonna switch handles so when i went to unplug this one this is the one that was plugged in it's really warm on the underside here uh just switched cables it barely reaches not great i could pull the truck forward i guess but uh let's go back in the truck and see how that goes so it's ramping back up here on the other cable and I guess we'll see how it handles this. Should get up to like 190-ish. Okay, so that looks normal. I guess we'll see how that holds. So I did the math and it looks like we went about 219 miles going from 100% to 1%. And we faulted again. This one is also really hot on the other side. That's really tight in there. Yeah, this handle's really hot. So that's not good. Same with this one still. Um, but we added about eight kilowatts. So I'm gonna move over to this 150, I guess, and hope for the best, because I do need to actually charge here. And we're trying this again, connecting to vehicle. We'll hop inside here see what happens starting hopefully we at least get 150 we'll see what happens sometimes these can actually go higher than they're rated for which would be great of course the other 350 kilowatt unit you can see right there is the the one that's down so we're at least charging again See how this ramps up. Ramping fairly quickly, so that's good. Let's see what we got. Well, 135 is not great, but as long as it actually holds, I'm, I guess, okay with that. And we've got some shenanigans happening again. So we're now down to 40 kilowatts. Not good at all. I guess I'll switch to the old cable on this unit and see what happens. So let's stop charging. You would think that these new handles would work better. This one isn't warm or anything, so it should, in theory, work. So that's how much we added before it started getting slow. 
here's that old handle or older handle at least now let's see what happens this time we're up to 16 percent um but not quickly let's see how quick this will let me start charging again uh, it's still saying thank you driver through my very bug covered windshield maybe it'll go who knows there we go we're starting that's good let's see what happens So this is now handle four for those keeping track. We have one left. So we've got the dead unit and we've got the CCS Chatamo there. So contactors are cl just clicked. Let's see what happens if we get full power and if it actually holds it. That's the key thing here, it seems. So 135, 136, that looks normal. That's what we got last time on this 150. I haven't actually really charged on a 150 with the R1T yet, but that looks good. And I guess I'll just give it a moment here and I'll update you if it fails again. Well, we are charged up to 75% uh, here and charging for about 94 minutes. Uh, it dropped down to 44 kilowatts after a few minutes and I just kind of gave up on trying to be better at that or better than that. Uh, so I took a little bit of a nap and we'll head to Ogallala. Uh, there's a Best Western there with charging maybe. So I'll go there and actually I'll probably just book it anyway. And then uh, if we need to go to the Electrify America nearby in the morning, we can do that. It looks like one stall is working there. Now it's giving me a charging error. Weird. Okay. Isn't that session detail? So just over an hour and a half. And we actually go back in time one hour on the way there. So we'll get there about 1230 in the morning. basically the same time as now, but uh, we'll have driven 52 miles, so let's get it done. Well, I just got to the hotel here, Best Western Plus, and we're at 51% here. We're getting um, six kilowatts, so not bad. It looks like we'll charge up to, uh, let's see. So it looks like we won't get a full charge by the morning, but that's fine. Uh, let me just set the charge limit to 85, see what happens. Yeah, okay, I'm actually gonna leave it at 100%, so we'll get maybe 90%. Um, but yeah, I wasn't expecting the charger to actually work because it has a dumb like Windows error, basically, or like Chrome error. But I just plugged it in anyway, and it, it's working, so that's fantastic, but gotta get checked in and i gotta go to bed because it is um it, that's not correct it's just past midnight because we went back one hour and the rivian actually reflected the time well got checked in uh room is pretty nice actually definitely overpriced it was like 150 dollars for the night uh, but it's time for me to get to bed because uh Cars resting and charging, I need to recharge now. See you in the morning. Good morning from Ogallala, Nebraska. Just sprayed some glass cleaner on the windshield. It's absolutely covered in bugs. Same with the front end of the truck here. Um, but letting that soak a little bit, so hopefully the bugs come off a little bit easier. Uh, then I'm gonna go in, at least check out the breakfast that's included with the hotel. Probably won't get, grab anything or maybe something to go. And then we'll hit the road here. We're charged up to 87% on the six kilowatt level two here. Uh, right there and things are going pretty well uh, glad I set the charge limit to 100% so it would go over 85 and I think we'll be able to make it all the way to Colorado but I might stop at the Julesburg free wire unit 
Uh, and I might also stop at the Fort Morgan Electrify America. So we'll see where we end up stopping, but we, I think we can make it all the way to Denver, Fort Collins, whatever. Haven't decided exactly where I'm going yet, but we shall see. Today is a lovely day. It's 820 in the morning and it's uh, 51 degrees out. So actually really nice. I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And now we're in the car. I've reset my trip for today. Uh, zero miles, but we're at 1192 on the odometer. Put quite a few miles on yesterday. Uh, I'll insert the stats there, hopefully, if I remember. And so this is the free wire that I was mentioning. So we'll stop there first. Just go check it out really nice and quick. You can see the Electrify America there on the map as well. And we've got 32 minutes to get there. So I'll get going. We're at 88% charge. Estimated range of 265 miles. We're in conserve in the low suspension not the lowest. Uh, so I'll actually raise it up a little bit. We've got quite a bit of range and I want to be comfortable. So let's get on the road. I've got the live stream going here as well and pile down the miles. We should be able to make it to greater Denver, Fort Collins, wherever I want to be very easily. <laughs> arrived at the Julesburg free wire here at the wagon and wheel Conoco. You can't really see it here. Uh, we've driven 30.7 miles, 1.84 mile per kilowatt hour. Uh, we don't need to charge. We're at 75% and we'll be next going to Fort Morgan, Electra America. Cause I haven't been there either. Let's see. That's here. Not too far of a drive, hour 28 minutes, calculating the route. Oh, that's not going that quickly. Well, anyway, let's check out the free wire here. I'm running this truck in standard suspension height because it's a little bit more comfortable that way. Um, gives you a little bit more suspension travel. This is probably the most off pavement the truck's been so far. And we've got some interesting bollards going on here with uh, uh, these just concrete blocks instead of traditional bollards. And let's see what the pricing is here. So 25 cents a kilowatt hour, very reasonable. Um, and then you can use the EV Connect app as well if you want. So I'm going to check what the price is on the EV Connect app since it seems like sometimes they don't match, which is really strange. Um, but I'm going to use whatever is the cheapest and then try it out. All right, opening the charge port here. I just activated it with the EV Connect app. Looks like it wants me to use this one here. I they're not really labeled on which one is which. This is a very heavy charging cable. This should do 350 amps, I believe, but we'll give it a moment here. And what's cool about these is that they can be served from either uh, 208 three phase or they can be served from 240 uh, split phase. So it looks like in this case, based on the number of wires here, we're being served by uh, 240 split phase. Not 100% sure, but I believe so. Actually, so, yeah. Yeah, so we're getting 240 volt split phase. Let's see if we can see the kilowatt hour used so far. So this has been used about 2,800 kilowatt hour. And this is pretty new unit. This is a um, 150 kilowatt version. So it'll output up to 350 amps. Got a picture of that. Pause that if you want to take a look. So we are charging now see the green light here green light on the front and we're getting 118 kilowatt which is pretty awesome at 75 percent must be just a result of the thermals so going to charge for a few minutes and these cables are hefty to say the least so we were charging at about 115 kilowatt we added three kilowatt hour and then it failed so let's see if there's any error on the screen here so that's not good that it failed here Yeah, okay. It doesn't give any indication that there was any problem, even though there clearly was. These holsters are a little clumsy. So let me try it with the Apple Pay this time and see what happens. So I'm trying to activate here via card. It says tap, insert, transaction or sweat. Canceled. Transaction canceled. Okay, that's not normal. Let me try again with the EV Connect app. 
All right, so I activated it again with the EV Connect app. And um, we've got a red light here. Looks like we've got Iowa Tesla guy pulling up here. It says session starting up. Let's see if this actually wants to work. Let's see if this wants to work. It failed after like a minute. Thank you. So finishing charging sequence. We'll see what happens here. So we ended up meeting a uh, Jim Iowa Tesla guy there driving away. Got to chat with him for a moment, which was nice. Uh, we didn't add really any energy at all. We are at 75% still. And now we'll head to the Fort Morgan, Electrify America, 99 miles. It says we'll get there with 111 miles on arrival. And we're at 75%. Live stream still going. Um, but yeah, uh, not sure why this station is not working 100%, which is very frustrating. <laughs> We have just arrived to the Fort Morgan Electrify America station and we're at 20% battery, which is exactly what I wanted to arrive with. And we've done 128 miles so far today. We did add about three kilowatt hour at that um, free wire unit. At the wagon wheel, we're averaging 1.47 mile per kilowatt hour, 77 uh, mile per hour average there, and 1.53 in the last 15 minutes. So. I looked at unplugged here and it seems that number three should be the best option, which is this one directly in front of us. So let's open the charge port there. I love that you can leave this open for on road trips um, and it's still sealed. It's got to seal all the way around it. So rather than having to put it back and the fact that it's a flap instead of the normal little plug, windshield's pretty dirty. Um, but let's see here. That's not the most promising. Um, well, let's try it. It's a 350, so hopefully it gives us decent speed. So uh, we'll let that sit for a moment and see what happens. Uh, being that the screen's blank, I'm not super confident that's going to work. This one says members only, credit card reader unavailable, which uh, seems about right. I don't think I've ever seen this screen before. Let's look and see at these other ones. Uh, so this 350 is showing complimentary session. This is number two. That showed as unavailable on the app. So I might have to move over here. And let's see this one. This one's also a uh, complimentary session as well. So uh, I think I might have to move over here because it looks like we're not charging yet. All right, moved over and we're gonna try this one now. So open the charge port. Hopefully we get decent speeds. Just like that. Man, we have some major bug carnage. Just look at that. Let's see what happens. Connecting to vehicle, that's promising. Initiating charging, also promising. Now it's just a matter of uh, will we get decent speeds. So good noise is happening. Let's see what how old these stations are. So these are 2018 built stations, it appears. And these are ABB, of course, as you can tell by the label. Um, not the best noises from the cooling system here. It's a complimentary session, so I didn't have to activate it or, any, or anything. Uh, no receipt, okay. So we do seem to be charging because the charge port light is green. You can't really tell on the video, but let's look inside. Oh, 200 kilowatt. Awesome. Well, I am loving that. Now it just needs to maintain that. Well, fantastic. We're getting 200 kilowatts or 203 because of the high pack voltage. So that's full 500 amps. Can't complain about that and it's free. Now it just needs to maintain that speed. We might even hit 220 
or at least like 210, 215 because we started a little bit later so it has a little bit more thermal longevity in theory. Well, we just departed the Fort Morgan, Colorado Electrify America. We added 93.7 kilowatt hour in 43 minutes, not bad. Um, charge up to 85% all the way from 20% uh, because I'm actually going up to Fort Collins to meet up with Kyle Connor from out of spec. Uh, we're gonna be doing some mile off-roading so I wanted to have a fair amount of charge being that he doesn't currently have home charging, which is not great. And the Loveland Electrify America that uh, he's been reporting on quite a bit is still down and has one stall functioning at the moment to my knowledge. Uh, hopefully I can check out that new Gen 4 Electrify America hardware that they're deploying there. Hopefully it's commissioned in the next few days. Uh, if it is, I'll definitely check it out. But we are headed to Costco now. I need to get more allergy meds and it's 73 miles away in Fort Collins and it's estimated we'll arrive with 169 miles of range. So time to get going. I'm going a little bit slower this leg and I'm driving on the low setting instead of standard. Uh, just trying to optimize my efficiency as much as I reasonably can to arrive with a decent amount of charge. Making a slight detour to the Loveland Electrify America. Uh, Want to check out how they're coming along on the retrofit of the Gen 4 charging stations there. And I'll grab a little bit of power while I'm there. I believe they still have the one ABB unit operational. We'll see if it's available. And if it is, great. If it's not, no big deal. We're at 63%, 190 miles estimated range. Um, so we'll stop at Loveland, we'll stop at Costco. Um, might try and grab a car wash, and then we'll head over to Kyle's. And I think that will be all for this video after that. Well, and we've made it to the Loveland Electrify America site. This is the new installation that I know Kyle has been tracking quite closely, as have many others, uh, to see kind of how long it takes for Electrify America to do these retrofits and all sorts of other fun stuff. So we're here and none of them have power, which is not too surprising. Um, but let me give you a little bit of a tour of what we've got going on. So here we have the four new dispenser styles. So these are Electrify America's Gen 4 hardware. That's actually a really slick um, cable or cable management system holder. Seems like they're not the strongest in there, but these are really tall actually. Uh, you got your screen here. They don't have any labels yet. That's where you'll scan your... Um, Apple Pay if you want to use it, credit card reader, of course. And we've got the handles here. Let's see if they have a part number. I don't know these super well enough to know if that's the new version part number or not. Unfortunately, the bollards seem to interfere a little bit with the cable movement, not great. Same thing on these ones. And then here we have the old ABB unit. So this one is actually powered down. For a brief bit, this was on even though the rest of the site wasn't, so I'm not sure what changed in that regard. Um, but this is still here, and you can actually kind of peek in through the slats of the fencing here. And you can see the, let's see here. So these ones closer to us, those are the newer BTC cabinets. And then way back there, the odd one out essentially, that is the older ABB cabinet so they did maintain that for the um uh abb dispenser here so it looks like this site will actually be uh 150 in chatamo 350 350 350 which is super cool uh not really expect because they do have three of the just the cabinets back here and to my knowledge each one of these cabinets is 360 kilowatts kind of see here i'll show you again There we have it. So that's the status of the site here. And they do have some construction equipment here. Let's see if there's a transformer or anything. Yeah, the same transformers here. So it's probably just a matter of getting everything turned on and commissioned.
made it to Costco here in Fort Collins, and man, am I glad to not be waiting in that gas station line. I don't know why people complain about waiting for charging. That's a crazy gas station line. Anyway, let's go into Costco. I've got the live stream going still in the car. They wanted to people watch, or I guess gas station watch. Um, and then we'll be heading over to get a car wash and then to Kyle's. <laughs> We made it to Fort Collins and you'll see a second truck back behind there. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already hit the like button and we'll see you on the next one.